The video you are about to see depicts a U.S. Navy F-14 Tomcat approaching the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk. It's 11.30 p.m., somewhere between the islands of Hawaii and Japan. The pilot is flying the aircraft in a controlled descent. However, the 80,000-ton aircraft carrier is bouncing like a cork. He's inside a half a mile. They're calling for power. He's low. Both air crews survived that night. There's a personal connection to what happened on the flight deck of that aircraft carrier. I was strapped to a jet about 60 feet away from the wreckage in the inferno. And I never would have imagined, 22 years later, that I would stand here and try and explain the connection to robots and what happened that night. But allow me to explain. You see, we are perched on the cusp of the fourth iteration of the Industrial Revolution. Some call it Manufacturing 4.0. What this will do is merge the technologies of artificial intelligence, robotics, and the Internet of Things. And for those of you who don't know what the Internet of Things is, it's this ubiquitous communication capability where robots can talk to other robots, Machines can talk to other machines, and humans are never involved. So that convergence of technology will drive an accelerated pace, and robots will lead the charge. So what is a robot nowadays? Well, it's any number of things. Here are just a few. There are surgical robots in ORs around the world performing intricate and delicate surgeries. There are agribots, agricultural robots, smart enough to fly the field, know when to come back to refuel, and also inform the farmer that it's time to irrigate or fertilize the crop. There are collaborative industrial robots, the biggest trend right now in industry. These are machines, these are robots designed to assist or collaborate with humans rather than replace them and increase productivity and throughput. There are also driverless cars, drones, submersibles, boats, they're coming. And believe it or not, they're coming sooner than you might expect. The last example I want to talk about is a service robot. This one is called Pepper. It was built expressly to interface with humans. And its artificial intelligence capabilities allow it to sense whether you're angry, anxious, sad, or happy. So what does this all mean to us, sitting here tonight? Well, with any burgeoning new technology, there are risks and there are rewards. The risk is that robots could displace human jobs. And the fact of the matter is today, robots are needed because humans don't want to work in dirty, dusty, hot, nasty environments. Employers are experiencing 30-plus percent turnover with their current manufacturing staff, and they can't keep up. So robots are critical to those roles. But what happens when enough humans perhaps get displaced? Discretionary income drops, and consumer spending that this economy is so dependent upon starts to waver. The last risk is political in nature. This $15 per hour minimum wage, I'll call it an experiment, could have some real ramifications for those people with low skill sets and low incomes because robots are poised to take those jobs. Also consider the tax implications for capital investment. If lawmakers or policymakers all of a sudden decide to tax automation capital differently than human or brick and mortar investments. But the benefits far outweigh these risks. Think for a moment about the enriched working environment that a person would have versus 
putting a round peg into a round hole, passing it to the next person who puts a square peg into a square hole, so on and so forth. Now they manage a bank of collective or collaborative robots. Think, too, about what artificial intelligence, robotics, and the Internet of Things will drive in terms of new careers, new requirements for human capital. And the last one I'll leave you with is demographics. The workforce is aging. People are staying in their jobs longer. They're not as productive. They're not as efficient. Cyberdyne Incorporated has in introduced a human exoskeleton. This is currently in use at Haneda International Airport in Japan. It's reported that a 100-pound woman can strap that exoskeleton on and lift 50% of her body weight for eight hours a day and go home not feeling exhausted. Now think about the opportunity to apply that same technology to a disabled person and allow them to join or rejoin the workforce. So in conclusion, robots will continue to do displace humans in dirty, dull, most importantly, dangerous jobs. Take it from somebody who was there. This is a good thing. Because if you look at this next video, what you will see is the next generation of unmanned Navy bombers. We have a tremendous responsibility to determine and shape the robot's role in our future. Engage in it. Dialogue over it. Because while robots are efficient, humans are ingenious. Thank you.